Um, with regard to powdered products out there, realizing that we have a whole food powder, uh, I've looked and it looks like a lot of these powders are from freeze drying. Well, a lot of people assume that freeze drying is a very cold process, which would ensure the integrity of the enzymes. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about uh, how freeze drying works and it's either pluses or minuses. Well, compared to, to juices, anytime you can dry a powder, you have greater chem, uh, sta stability within the product itself. Because once it's dried to a powder, the chemistry is dormant and inactive. So you can store it, you can ship it. You don't have to be adding preservatives into it because it's stable. It's a stable powder form. It's not, it, it, microorganisms are not going to grow in a, a low moisture environment that you have within powders. So that's why drying is able to allow you to preserve nutritional values greater than doing a juice and pasteurization process. But within that, once it was, as you said, there is a differences between the quality of powders and the, that are produced through given drying processes. Freeze drying is known to be one of the highest quality drying processes that it would preserve more nutritional values than a standard typical spray drying process. The reason being is the typical spray drying process, in order to be effective and dry the powder within two to three minutes, it is requiring high temperatures. The temperatures of a spray dryer can start out at three to four hundred degree temperatures of air as well, with the product temperature itself often exceeding 160 degrees Fahrenheit in order to get the moisture out of the inside of those droplets in a spray dryer. So you can see the heat impact there has almost similar nutritional degradation aspects that a pasteurization process does. So they turn to freeze dryer because the drying process of freeze dryers increases nutritional retention over standard spray drying and pasteurization. But most people thinking that because it's a freeze dryer and the product is frozen, hence the freeze drying process, they think, well, the product must stay cold while it's there to be frozen. But if you understand how freeze dryers work, they have to start out frozen. So they have to have a frozen product going into chambers that then provide a vacuum, but they still need a heat source to be able to take the frozen liquid that's within, you know, a produce or product, whatever's put in there, and get that liquid that's go from a solid to have it go to a vapor without liquefying. So rather than use an ambient air temperature, they have in a vacuum, there's, there's no air to transfer the heat. So they use infrared heat. Infrared heat heats up the physical uh, objects that the infrared is placed upon. So it is warming up under the vacuum. So most people don't realize as it goes through that process, typical products in a freeze dryer are in excess of 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And that all depends upon the time that it takes for the product to dry. Because a freeze drying process is not quick. It doesn't happen in two to three minutes like a spray dryer. It takes 12 to 72 hours to dry under a vacuum with infrared heat. So within that time process, if you're doing it 12 hours, you're able to do it either because you're drying minimal amounts at a time or you're cranking up the infrared heat because the cost of freeze drying is not cheap, it's expensive. So they're trying to optimize what they do in terms of their time and their temperatures. And I've seen products that got ran through the freeze dryer too quick and they got burnt. So freeze drying certainly is better than spray drying and better than pasteurized juices, but still compared it to our drying process where we're drying it in, in less than 120 seconds and at a temperature below 100 degrees Fahrenheit, we're doing it quick and we're keeping the product temperature low. And just to illustrate a little bit more, we're doing our product in our InstaFresh drying process does not get even above 65 degrees Fahrenheit until it's 85% dry. What that means at 85% dry, it's mostly dry powder, the chemistry is stable, so even though it's drying off that last bit of moisture as it gets up closer to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, chemistry is stable, we're preserving the nutritional value. 
we preserve higher enzymatic natural microorganisms that are essential from whole foods, we preserve higher values of those, which equates to nutritional values overall of product higher than any other drying process in the world.